in Matthew chapter number 25. If you got it, would you say amen? amen. Verse number 1, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto the ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps while the bridegroom tarried. They all noticed that now. They all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. And can I say, I cannot wait for that day. I cannot wait. Hallelujah. And all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Now notice this, this is sad here. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. Now notice this now. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Father, it's been a great opportunity, Lord, to serve you this weekend. Lord, I count it a great privilege, Lord, to stand in this man of God's desk. Lord, I esteem that man of God very highly in my eyes. Lord, this man of God, Lord, allowed us, God, to preach in his pulpit. Lord, I don't take that lightly. Lord, I appreciate it. Lord, I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Lord, he could have called thousands of other men of God. But, Lord, it means a lot to this young man, God, that he would see fit, God, to call us. And, Lord, I believe with all my heart, God, you've done some work in people's hearts this weekend. But God, I do feel, Lord, been feeling it all day. God, there's somebody, Lord, who's just hanging out and was hanging on somebody else's salvation. And Lord, the sad reality is you're not going to be able to get in in heaven, Lord, on mom and dad's religion. Lord, you're not going to be able to get in on papa and mama's salvation. Lord, they have to get it themselves. God, every song's been sung. Brother Ray opened up. Lord, with about, I'll fly away. I'm going to heaven. Lord, you've arranged this tonight. And Lord, I pray, Brother James just sung, I got saved. Lord, I pray, God, we can sing that tonight, Lord, in our hearts and mean it. Lord, I pray you'll deal with those that need this tonight. Lord, maybe you need to remind us, God, this world, Lord, is not our final home. Lord, all the sorrow, all the disappointments, all the grief and all the troubles, Lord, this is as worse as it's going to get for the child of God. Lord, make heaven come down tonight. God, move amongst your people, Lord, anything that gets accomplished. It'll be 0% man and 100% God. And the church said amen. We find by way of introduction, we find the people that is involved. Look there in verse number 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Ladies and gentlemen, whether you know it or not, there are two classifications of people here tonight. Uh, we appreciate you being here. I know there's man and woman here, but I'm talking about the spiritual ram in our life. Brother James, there's either saved... Or there's lost. There's no middle ground with God. Miss Brittany, it's either I'm going to heaven or I'm going to hell. There's no I don't knows, Brother Phil. There's no maybe souls. There's no think souls. Brother John, it's either you're saved or in going to heaven or you're lost going to hell. There's no middle ground tonight. There's no middle ground to stand on. It's either Calvary and Jesus or the devil in hell. There's no other middle ground. Notice here the groups of people. Verse number 3. They that were foolish took their lamps, but notice this, and took no oil with them. May I say, ladies and gentlemen, oil in the Bible. And I know that big old jug's probably under here somewhere. I'm not going to get it out. Please don't be scared. Uh, but the oil in the Bible represents the Holy Spirit of God. And whether you know it or not, Brother Jordan, when we got saved, Brother Phil, somehow, I don't know how God does it, but He sends His Holy Spirit and He lives right there in my heart. And may 
I say this? If the Spirit of God does not indwell you, if the Spirit of God does not live inside your heart, if the Spirit of God does not convict you of your wrong, when you mess up, honey, there's a problem in your heart. If there's no all spiritually, there's no Jesus. I've seen people, Brother Josh, they go through life and, and live through life and man, they can do wrong and they can sin and there's no conviction. There's no change in their heart. The Bible still says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Can I say that again? Old things are passed away. Old things are passed away. Old talks are passed away. Old paths are passed away. Those drinking buddies are passed away. Those drugs are gone. That alcohol has gone. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. May I say again, make real strong emphasis. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. May I say tonight, if there's never been a change in your heart, you're lost and you're on your way to hell tonight. There's no middle ground. There were five that were foolish. They had the facade. They had Miss Brittany. They had Miss Kathy. The facade. They looked like everybody else. They acted like everybody else. But down on the inside of their heart, they have no oil. You, you might be here tonight and we appreciate you being here but can I say a smile is not going to get you into heaven right. being faithful to the house of God I'm sure your preacher appreciates you being faithful to the house of God but just because you're here on a Sunday night does not mean that you are going to heaven the only way you can go to heaven is if the spirit of God draws you I'm glad the Bible says Romans 10 13 for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved it doesn't matter what you've done it doesn't matter I'm going to have myself a time tonight it doesn't matter what you're in how far you're in there's a good God of glory who died for you who loved you where you are and he can save your soul no all they looked apart but guess what their lamps when they needed them there was nothing on the inside let me say this tonight you can fake it as long as you want to. Right. Yeah. But Miss Kathy, Brother Randy, there's going to come a time when what's on the inside is going to be put out. Right. Look with me here. Not only there's the foolish, but notice the fresh. Verse number four, the Bible says, But the wise took all in their vessels with their lamps. May I say tonight, there's a classification that is lost but I'm glad I'm right here with the wise. Hallelujah. I remember as a 16 year old young man I remember man I was a preacher's kid. If anybody's supposed to have religion, God help it has to be the preacher's kids. Man their dad's a pastor and surely Miss Kathy if anybody brother Peter has religion and has a relationship with God it has to be a preacher's kid. I remember as a 16 year old young man Ralph Sexton man junior was over there at the racetrack and y'all ever heard, man, that chauffeur he blew? Anybody ever know what I'm talking about? Man, that, that, that the Tuesday night right over there, man, he blew that chauffeur and it scared the living daylights out of me. Brother John, I instantly thought in my mind, preacher, I instantly thought in my mind. I said, man, Miss Kathy, if this is the last trumpet, I'm, I'm lost. I'm going to hell. I'm a preacher's kid, 16 years old. You say, preacher, does 10, 11, 12-year-old kids go to hell? I'm sad to report they do. It doesn't matter what age. If you reject the calling of God, if you reject, man, God's son dying for you, and you split eternity wide open, God has no other place for you. I have people ask me all the time, how can a loving and just God send people to hell? I say he don't. He made a way of escape. He died on the cross for our sin. Honey, if you go to hell tonight, you're going to trample over the blood of Jesus. You're going to trample over the cross. You're going to trample over the darling Son of God. Never forget, Dad, I have no idea what he was saying. Miss Brittany on that left side, y'all know how Dad gets all wild and crazy. Brother John, I'm not, I have no idea, Brother Josh, what he was saying. But I know who was talking to me on that about fifth row back. Man, the Holy Ghost, Brother James. Listen, he didn't have to pay me a visit. 
The Spirit of God, Brother Peter, didn't have to come by where I was. He could have left me and still been a just and a holy God, Brother Doug. But I'm glad that Wednesday night Dad's over here saying all kind of stuff. I didn't really care what was going on. The only thing I knew if I'd have left that night, I'd have died and went to hell. But you know what I did? I white knuckled that back of that pew and I said, I can't do this. People are going to think I'm crazy. Brother John, I almost missed my opportunity. One thing I remember is Dad saying this, and you done it this morning. Let's sing one more verse. He said a couple times, this might be your verse. Brother Jordan, I'll never forget, I got up from that pew. At that moment, I knew I was going to hell. I didn't give a rip who said anything. I didn't care if somebody talked about me. I didn't give a rip, honey. I got up as a 16-year-old lost man. I met Jesus in the altar. And honey, from since that on, I'd had the Spirit of God living on inside of me. There ain't a doubt in my heart. If I was to drop dead tonight, I'm not going to hell. I'll never feel the flames of hell. I don't have to go down there. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. Hallelujah to God. No doubt in my heart. If I was to die tonight, I'm going to be with God. I'm not going to hell. The only fire I'll ever feel is a burden in my soul. I nailed it down that night. And the Spirit of God indwells my heart. The Spirit of God, the same God those kids talked about that hewn out the mountains and he carved out the ocean. That same God lives inside my soul. I'm thankful he didn't have to save me. Boys, I'm glad he didn't have to save me. Barney, I'm glad God loved me. I'm glad God showed me mercy and saved my soul. I'm hell proof tonight. There's nothing a demon in hell can do about it. Nan, nan, a boo boo. I'm going to be with God. The wise and the foolish, there were some that had the Spirit of God, and there was a preacher who did not have the Spirit of God. Notice there, there's the people involved. Notice the prolonging there in verse number five. The Bible says, while the bridegroom tarried. Let me say right here tonight that the world says, Brother James, God's not coming back. Y'all remember Y2K? All that nonsense. This is going to be the year of the Lord's return. The Bible strictly says, no man knoweth the day or the hour. Not the angels don't even know. But may I our textbooks may read that God's not coming back. CNN may say that God's not coming back. The Fox News may tell us that God's not coming back. Missing that our newspapers might tell us that God's not coming back. Brother Clint, our local news may tell us that God's not coming back. But honey, I want you to mark it down and follow the way in your heart. I don't care what nobody says. This blessed old Bible tells us there's going to come a day when the Son of God is coming back. There's nothing nobody can do about it. The bridegroom's coming. The bridegroom's coming. Sir, it doesn't matter what you think tonight. The bridegroom's are coming. Teenager, you may think I'm crazy tonight. I'm just trying to warn you, you don't got to go there. There's the bridegroom's are coming. The bridegroom's are coming. He's tarrying. I hear messages all the time. We was talking about them earlier. How many the older preachers of time, Brother Josh, they're looking for that blessed hope yeah. and the glorious appearing our dear Savior. Yep. Guess what they were preaching about it then? We're preaching about it now. And if you're, some of these young men get called to preach, they're going to preach about it then. It does not change the fact God is still coming back. Hey, Say, preacher, what were they doing while the bridegroom was waiting? Luke 12 verse number 40 Be therefore ready also For the Son of Man cometh At an hour when you think not What a better time for the Lord to come yeah. Amen. Mark 13 verse 32 and 33 But of that day and the hour No, no man No not the angels which are in heaven 
neither the Son but the Father. Take ye heed, watch and pray, for you know not when the time is. First Thessalonians 5 verse number 2. For there yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in night. If you knew tonight, Brother James, that you're just going to get home and God forbid this happened. I ain't trying to put this bad stuff on you, I promise. But if you knew right now that somebody was breaking in your house, if you knew right now that a thief was coming at 7, 13 p.m. to your house, you know what you do? Hopefully, have some ammunition. Can I get an amen? They're going to bust the door and they're going to run as fast as they can. Say amen. You would do everything in your power to stop them from coming in if you knew about it you know why people don't get saved because they don't believe he's coming back you know why you're here tonight and you're playing the facade and you're acting like you got it you know why you don't, don't get saved you know why it don't scare you because you just don't believe he's coming back the sad reality is, man, I, I, I read a number not too long ago that so much percentage, I believe it was 60 some percent of church members are lost you know why? Because it's easy to play the facade. Yeah. It's easy to get up here in the choir loft and, and sing, man, praise God, without a doubt I'm saved. Why everybody else is doing it, you just hop on in. But the truth of the matter is, the day is coming in when you're going to find out who's got it yeah. and who don't. Right. My dad's man been telling me this my whole life. He said, Brother James, Brother Doug, he said uh, he hopes that Christ's return before he dies and can I say this everything in biblical prophecy yep. is fulfilled right. yep. everything that has to happen for God to come back is done yep. Yep. Yes, sir. let me ask you a question tonight if we knew Miss Brittany at 730 Jesus was going to split the eastern sky and Jesus was going to come and then the groom's coming to get us. Man, Brother Phil, he's coming. Miss Kathy, he's coming at 7.30. I wonder, preacher tonight, who would be left in the pew? Knowing, Peter, without a shadow of a doubt, God's coming. And can I say, just as sure if we knew that, Brother Josh, we don't know when he's coming, but all thing I can tell you, he's coming. The prolonging, the prolonging. Notice the passiveness there in verse number 5, the latter end. Now notice this, the wise and the foolish, they all slumbered and slept. May I say this, I'll run this and move right along. I'm, I'm not going to preach long, I promise. But may I say this tonight, we are living in the most passive generation that I've ever seen before in my life. We got this attitude, man. We're saved. And I listen, we can shout, thank God I'm saved. Hallelujah. But why ain't we telling nobody else? Right. I'm, I'm going to preach right here. Just for, I promise I'm not just going to plow right over this and move, move right along. We'll talk about everything under the sun but the Lord. You don't got to amen me there because I'm telling the truth. It's at home. Man, people talk about their grandkids. People preach their, we'll talk about their football team. I ain't talking about a lick right now. I don't even care what's going on in the Tiger Stadium. I don't give a rip what's going on. Right. Brother Phil, Brother Doug, we, we'll talk about everything under the sun. But yet somebody brings up Jesus, we get a little embarrassed. Good. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Are you saved? Good. Good. If you can talk about everything but Jesus, and Jesus, let me ask you this tonight. If we was to grab this microphone tonight, preacher, we was to grab this microphone and pass it around. Him. And Miss Annette, we start over here. I'm going to say, hey, what's your testimony? How many people would tits up real quick? Some of you looking at me a little scared right now. I wonder, Brother Phil, if we started passing the microphone around. Hey, Brother Josh, what's your testimony? Hey, man, Brother Peter, what's your testimony? Do you know you're saved? Man, tell us about it. I wonder, Miss Brittany, how many people would say, I don't got one. I'm scared too. Let me say this. I'd rather you be scared right this moment than you spend eternity in hell. I'd rather you be a nervous wreck tonight and tore up from the floor up knowing that you're not saved and get something nailed down with God. If God saves you, you got a testimony. 
I just wonder, may, maybe one Sunday, preacher, you need to come in and just give everybody the microphones. Brother Jordan, what's your testimony? Young man, what's your testimony? What's your testimony? Well, I wonder how many people get scared. Yeah. Some of you got a little scared just now. You look right at me kind of just scared. Let me say this. If you'll be ashamed of God, yeah. God will be ashamed of you. Right. There's wise and there's foolish. There's wise and there was foolish. There's a wedding about to take place. Yeah. There, there's a big wedding about to take place. What's the bridegroom's waiting? But may I say, the ones that have the oil, they're ready, Miss Kathy, to see the groom. Yeah. They're ready. Look there in verse number, 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 number nine. And in verse number six, and at midnight, may I say, ladies and gentlemen, midnight is a dark place to be. Yep, right. I believe with all my heart we are in the darkest part. I know my 31 years, we are living in the darkest part of the of a year I've ever seen. I'm not going to ask what else can go wrong. Man, this world is in total chaos. Nobody loves God no more. People are falling to the wayside. She's at an all-time high. Sex and drugs and alcohol is at an all-time high. Honey, we are in a dark spot in our lives. You know what I see? A perfect opportunity for the bride to come get his groom, the groom to come get his bride. Yes, Brother Jeffrey, it's dark. Yes, things are bad. Brother Josh, it has to get worse before my Lord mounts his horse and comes back to get us. Can I remind you, yeah, it may be dark, but it's a perfect time for God to come back. There is the passiveness. May I say this? It's just not enough. To be satisfied with the oil. May I say God help us to never get satisfied of just being saved. Miss Renee, you come. Notice the panic. Notice the panic, please. Notice the panic there in verse number 6. Could you imagine they're all sleeping? They're all sleeping, Brother Jordan. They're all taking a nap and they're all laying out and uh, man, they're, they're all just hanging out. Miss Kathy, Miss Renee, just hold up one second, please. And all of a sudden, Brother Josh, and all of a sudden, there comes the cry coming out. Yeah. Hey! The bridegrooms are coming. Yep. Hey! There's a bomb about to fill a preach coming on. Lord, help me. I got to hurry up and quit. Hey! You better get up. Hey, Miss Kathy, you better get up. The bridegrooms are coming. Honey, can I tell you, there's a wedding about to take place. It's not going to involve no people. It ain't going to involve Jeffrey. It ain't going to involve men people. It's going to be the dear Son of God. And guess who he's coming to get? The bride. I'm trying to stop. Good gracious, there's so much liberty. Can I say if you are saved, Jesus and God are looking at each other, Brother Jordan. I believe with all my heart tonight, if it was 7.30, nine minutes away, this could be the night. Brother Peter, God looks at him. Jesus looks at God said, Jesus, man, you know they're struggling down there. You know they're struggling. Preacher Foster, you know they're hurting. Can I please go get them? I died on the cross for their sins. I love them. I love them. I want to go get them. I want to go get them, Brother Clint. I want to, Brother John. I love them. I gave my life for them. I want to see my bride. And honey, can I say, that day is fast approaching. Could you picture with me that wedding that day? Could you picture, Brother James? Could you picture me? Hey! The bridegrooms is coming. Yeah. Hey, the bridegrooms are coming. And the sad reality is there was five that was ready and there was five that was not. Those five, you'll find there, they said, hey man, you got to go get your own. And I say amen to that. Hey. Yeah. Can I say tonight, child, if you're, you're trying Go off mom and dad's religion and their relationship with God, you're going to go straight to hell. Right. So preach that's a little tough. It's the God's truth. Hey. You're trying to hold on to mama and papa's and you open papa's coattail, gets you into heaven. Miss Kathy, the sad reality is that there's going to be people sitting inside Emmanuel Baptist Church. When that trumpet sounds, 
there will be people coming to back on Sunday morning, Brother Ray, and Sunday night, sitting inside the pew that will never get to spend eternity in heaven. The bridegroom's coming. Could you imagine that day? Miss Renee, you can go ahead. Could you imagine that day? Could you imagine? Could you imagine? All the heartache we I about feel a Holy Ghost. All the heartache we go through. All the troubles, all the trials. My God, and all of a sudden, Jesus, the trumpet of God says, Then clouds split wide open. And there's the groom. There's the Son of God. Can I say, He's not coming for the lost. He's not coming to get the devil. He's coming to get the bride. I'm glad I'm saved. I'm glad I'm in. I'm glad the Son of God. We're married. And we're going to be with God forever. The wedding day's coming. The wedding day's coming. The wedding march. Are you in the bride? I wonder tonight. Are you going to be in the wedding? Are you going to be part of the bride? All the attention is going to be on the saints of God. The angels in heaven, they will look to us. We are the bride of Christ. This is as bad as it's going to get. I wish I could preach what I feel in my soul. Honey, this is as bad as it's going to get. We're going to a land. We're getting to be with God forever. Hallelujah to God. I want to ask you tonight, are you going to be in that wedding? I would not take the risk tonight. I wouldn't miss it for the world. I can see on some of your faces. Tonight, God's giving you another handout. Preacher, you come. Don't miss the wedding. Don't miss it tonight. Don't miss this opportunity. Mom and Daddy's been praying for you. Grandma and Grandpa's been praying for you. Please don't miss out on the greatest wedding that will ever take place the son of God is coming back to get me nasty rotten preacher's kid he's coming to get me and may I say my invitation's already up there I'm going are you going to be part of the wedding heads bowed eyes closed somebody here needs saved tonight I ditch pride and I get in this altar and I get saved. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.